Hello friends, welcome back. I am Rajnesh and today's session is about how we create or add a new virtual machine in our environment. So first thing I need to do is I need to connect to the Windows machine from which I'll be using vSphere client to connect to the ESXi server. Okay, so here is vSphere client that I double clicked on. IP address is fine username is root and here goes the password okay so I am planning to create a new virtual machine or uh, I can give it a name AD or Active Directory you can say so just reduce the size double click on put T and login into infrastructure info infra server so first thing that I need to do is I need to create a new virtual machine I'll be creating under global infra uh, global internet so I just right click on it a new virtual machine typical the name will be or uh, let's give it a name AD or <laughs> AD is fine. Ha ha ha. Samba 4. The objective of this virtual machine will be it is going to act as an active directory and it can work as a central authentication for Linux and Windows domains or Linux and Windows machines. So, name is Samba 4, it's fine. Uh, let me find out what is the IP address I can give it so first thing I'll do is I'll move to where named chroot where named and here I can see the files corresponding to forward and reverse lookup let me find out which is the IP address that I have which is free and that can be allocated to Samba 4 so it'll be named dot labs and I assign it the IP address to double one two double one I update this serial number today is uh, 5th Jan so I update this one right and coming on to the reverse lookup update the date and add the record the name is going to be Samba 4 so I can understand what this machine is and I reload named let me try to resolve both forward and reverse lookup Samba 4 it goes fine forward lookup is fine let me try to find out reverse lookup so it is working fine so one part is done IP address is 211 192.168.1.211 ok click on next select the only available data, uh, data store Operating system is Linux RHEL6. Select the VM network E1000 adapter because it supports ETH tool in Red Hat. Thick provisioning 6GB is fine for me. 
click on next editing is actually not required so I just click on uh, yeah I can do editing to reduce the RAM utilization by it and to 512 works fine 512 MB MB works fine CPU I can allocate two CPUs that is fine I just click on finish so the name of the machine is Samba 4 I just power it on open console edit settings and here I can see that a MAC address has been assigned to it so the next part that I have to do is I have to statically assign an IP address corresponding to this VM so here is how we do it coming on to the configuration file of DHCPD slash etc DHCP DHCPD.conf I add a section corresponding to the static assignment which starts from host I yank it and paste it the name is going to be Samba 4 allow booting and boot P so that I can re-kick the machine whenever I require it hardware Ethernet this is the most important 000c29 then it goes E9 E9 05DE 05DE okay and the fixed address is corresponding to the name Samba 4 Samba 4 I just write and quick init.d dhcpd restart ok click on ok so last time what happened it was not able to get the IP address from the DHCP uh, server and it was not able to start up using the PXC boot let's just reboot it and here we can see that it has started booting from the PXC select the operating system and now it will boot from this PXC environment and it will have the base packages I'll show you what the kickstart is ks.cfg is the kickstart that it is using so here is the configuration it says firewall should be enabled allowing SSH access to anyone okay reinitialize option was not set in ks so I need to do it manually reinitialize all this is the warning th that says all of your data present on the hard disk will be lost so reinitialize all so it will continue installing okay the objective is to install this is the IP address of the NS NFS server that we created and this is the directory slash media under which we have asynced the complete CD or the CD is mounted actually it's DVD instead of CD so root password is the password that is assigned to this VM any VM that we will be installing using this kickstart this is encrypted so even in case anyone sees it he know, uh, doesn't know what this password is for authentication use shadow shadow means the local authentication your password is present in slash etc shadow and the password policy is also assigned on a user basis in etc shadow file 
and user details can be fetched from etc password algorithm that it has to use is SHA512 install mode has to be in text mode as you can see that this is not using GUI it's using text mode first boot disable first boot is the option or the GUI that you see as soon as it first reboots into the GUI and it asks you to enable or disable firewall enable or disable SA Linux or creation of new users keyboard type it's US language you can specify SA Linux I set it over here as enforcing logging level and after the installation is completed the virtual machine should be rebooted time zone it says the hardware clock is set to UTC and the second section says the time zone that it has to use which is universal time clock UTC network information so this machine will be using boot proto equal to DHCP so after the machine has been installed it will be using the IP address that DHCP server is going to provide it the device that it has to use is Ethernet 0 or ETH 0 on boot should this device be enabled or not so on boot equal to on says it should be enabled bootloader configuration where should the bootloader be installed location equal to MBR says master boot record and we have already we only have one MBR corresponding to every hard disk so in case we have multiple operating system this bootloader grub or brand unified bootloader which is present on master boot record can take care of booting the other operating systems this is the MD5 cryptid password that can be used to modify anything in the grub so bootloader will now be password protected the default boot will work fine but in case you want to edit everything uh, anything you need to make use of this MD5 password clear path equal to all means all the partitions will be deleted and the partition table will be created again part partition slash boot file system type it should be formatted using ext4 and size is 100 megabytes so in case you haven't specified the value or the unit th that you in that needs to be used by default the unit that is used is megabytes partition swap file system type is swap sizes 1024 MB minus minus gross is whatever space is left utilize that complete space so after allocating the space to boot and swap all the other space will be allocated to the root partition then coming on to the post section which says after the installation is completed what should be done so I am just removing all the files present in yum.rappos.d star.rappo because by default when you install CentOS it installs the repository corresponding to the update CentOS media which is disabled and there are some default repositories which CentOS provides so I'm just removing those repositories and creating a file that will be using our own laboratories repository so it's enabled GPG check is enabled for it and percentage packages say what all packages I have to install so by default it's installing only the base packages so whenever we'll be creating a new virtual machine by default it is going to have only the base packages other packages we will be installing later so here we can see that IP address has been assigned to it hostname has been assigned to it as Samba4 and hostname yeah the domain name is labs.local so what we had to do is first thing we had to add a forward and reverse lookup entry in DNS server so that it can be resolved the second part was the DHCP server while providing it 
the IP address it will make use of the MAC address of the client so that it it statically binds this MAC address to that particular IP address so it receives the IP address and the name from the D uh, IP address from the DHCP server and the name can be resolved from DNS server so finally using the PXE it has been installed with the complete operating system that we wanted from us that's it let me know if in case you have any concerns thanks for viewing the video have a good day